Now let us classify the drugs on the basis of their therapeutic action. So thera the therapeutic action of different uh, classes of drugs. The first category in this comes is the antacids. The antacids are those drugs or those chemical substances which are taken to what get prevention or to get relief from the acidity or from the HCL which is secreted in excess in our stomach. Maybe due to some food uh, substances which we have taken, what happens is some excess of HCL is being secreted and that is being prevented. That, is, can, that can be cured by taking those a certain bases like the common one are sodium, hydrogen, carbonate aluminium and magnesium hydroxide mi uh, mixtures those are taken which actually neutralizes the excess of the HCl taken and thus prevents the acidity. So hyperacidity or acidity is prevented by taking those um, these uh, bases uh, and these are called antacids. Now this is actually a time a time relief or for a time, relief for a time being because those are those ba uh, bases which are being those acids which are secreted in excess is being are being neutralized. Now if too much of base is taken that even can cause alkaline, uh, uh, the alkaline nature of the uh, or alkaline medium in the stomach and that can still stimulate more of the secretion of the HCL. And that is what that can lead to ulcers. So that is not a, a very good preventive measure but yes for an immediate effect we can take those, these antacids. The second category of the uh, drugs on the basis of their therapeutic action are, are antihistamines. See histamines are those chemicals which are actually being secreted by the mast cells which are there lying beneath just our skin to, uh, of, uh, uh, because of the allergic action. Now these chemical substances they interact with the skins or for the, on the nasal passage or our eyes and, and they block the uh, nasal passage cause uh, what uh, problems in the breathing can cause conjunctivitis in the eyes and on the skin rashes etc. Now a very uh, the discovery made a lot of difference in the, this, in the treatment of the high, uh, hyperacidity. Uh, it was realized that there are certain substances which interacts with those substances which are receptors in the stomach which increase pepsin and HCL. Now then we develop drugs which stops these, the interaction of these chemical substances to those receptors. Now such drugs are again are called antihistamines but they prevent the secretion of the HCL in the stomach. Now the most two, the two common most common uh, drugs in this cat of this category are cimetidine and enantidine and they are the largest selling drugs in the, in the category. The reason being because they prevent the secretion of the HCL by stopping the interaction of those chemical substances with the receptors which secretes HCL. Now we know that histamines other causes the, the blockage of the, um, uh, of the windpipe, the, the, the uh, uh, oesophagus because of, this, of the secretion of those uh, substances, uh, histamine and it causes conjunctivitis, nasal blockage etc. So we use this vasodilators, we use certain chemical substances which, which basically gives relief to us from uh, this type of histamines. Antihistamines usually are uh, competitive inhibitors, they compete with the, uh, the uh, substances, enzymes and stops their enzymatic activities. The third category of drugs on the basis of their therapeutic actions are, your, are neurologically active drugs. Now the first category of neurologically active drugs are tranquilizers. Tranquilizers are those chemical substances which are used to cure mild or severe mental diseases, mental depressions, um, um, uh, depressions, hypertensions, etc. So anybody who is having some mental problem, they are given these kind of chemical substances which are called or drugs which are called tranquilizers. Now what we, it has been realized that there is a hormone or a chemical messenger called noradrenaline which is mainly responsible for keeping what keeping us active and keeping uh, giving us a, a, a feeling of well-being. When its level goes down in the blood, we feel depressed. We, we, feel, we feel depressed. So what these drugs basically does is that they stops the what the breaking down of this chemical noradrenaline. And thus they have, therefore they prevents what they maintains the level of this noradrenaline in the blood and they therefore they act as antidepressant drugs. And antidepressant drugs are of various types, various categories and equinol is a very important commonly used antidepressant drug. We have another category of drugs which are again a tranquilizer which are called barbiturates or which are also called derivatives of barbituric acids. Like we have veronal, luminal, siconal etc. All these they are, are actually are hypnotic, they induce sleep but yes they are very good tranquilizers. The second category of neurologically active drugs are analgesics. See, analgesics are those drugs which gives us relief from the pain. 
Now these drugs basically are of two types, non-narcotic and narcotic. Non-narcotic are non-addictive in nature. We can take them anytime and they will, it will not be habitual once we take them. Now aspirin and paracetamol are the most commonly used analgesics. They give us relief from the pain. There is one more important use of the aspirin is that it, it is also used as what blood thinner. In the, there are other uses of the aspirin also they are used in the many other uh, uh, curing of the diseases but it, this, this time it is its main use is as, in, as a non-narcotic analgesic. Narcotic analgesics are addictive in nature. Once taken, they, they will, uh, you will get a habit of taking them. Now, the common examples are your morphine, codeine, heroin, etc. Since morphine and heroines are basically are the products of the one which we obtain from poppy seeds, they are also called uh, opiates. They are obtained from opium. Now, these are hypnotic in nature. They induce sleep and if, if taken in overdoses, they may lead to death. So, these are your analgesics, neurologically active drugs. The fourth category of drugs on the basis of their therapeutic actions are the antimicrobials. See, we get diseases or infections due to a lot of bacteria, viruses, fungal, alga and other types of uh, orga organisms, pathogens, etc. All these are microorganisms. So, in order to prevent us from, or in order to actually get, uh, get, to get cure from those diseases or those problems, what we have to do is, either we have to stop their growth or we have to kill those, these microorganisms. And that is why we have developed these antimicrobials. Now, they are basically of two types, what are called antibiotics. Antibiotics are those drugs, basically, these are chemical substances which are obtained from living uh, of our microorganisms and are used to stop or to kill the other microorganisms. The chemical substances which are obtained from microorganisms and are used to stop the growth of the microorganisms and you are used to kill the other microorganisms are called uh, antibiotics. The most commonly used antibiotics we know we, we have been knowing is penicillin. Discovered by the Alexander Fleming, from the, we are knowing it from the uh, World War time that they are the one most commonly used antimicro antimicrobials because they are the ones which will give us a lot of protection against these microorganism uh, microbial infections. Now, these antibiotics can be categorized into two types, bacterial, bactericidal and bacteriostatic. Now, bactericidal are those antibiotics which kills the microorganisms. They are very strong like penicillin and afloxin. Whereas, we have those antibiotics which are called bacteriostatic, they stop the growth of the microorganisms and they are called erythromycin, tetracycline and chloroamphenol. So, these are the two basic types of antibiotics we have. We also classify the antibiotics into two categories called broad spectrum and narrow spectrum. Broad spectrum antibiotics are those antibiotics which are, are those antibiotics which can be used, which one antibiotic can be used for curing of many diseases. Like we have chloramphenol and tetracycline. These are two are called are basically are broad spectrum antibiotics. They can be used to cure number of diseases. Whereas simultaneously we have such antibiotics which, which are very specifically used for specific type of diseases or infections of our microorganisms, and such are called narrow spectrum. Penicillin is a narrow spectrum antibiotic. So, these are your commonly used or uh, uh, type of antibiotics. The second category of antimicrobials are antiseptics and disinfectants. Let us first do antiseptics. The chemical substances which are used to what clean and to uh, uh, which are or used for on wounds and cuts or which are used to clean uh, the wounds and the cuts are called antiseptics. They are actually safe for uh, human tissues. That doesn't cause any harm and they, they uh, prevents or kills the microbial microorganisms which are there on those cuts and wounds and thus prevents uh, us from getting infection. Now the commonly used antiseptics are sophromycin and, and furacine. They are the more commonly used on the skin on the skin. Whereas you can use trencher iodine, which is a 2 to 3 percent iodine solution in alcohol, which again is a very important and commonly used um, antiseptic. We, the most commonly used is a Dettol, we, which we all, we all use in our, household, uh, in our day to day uh, life in, in, our, in our houses. It's a mixture of chlorozenol and terpenol, which is again is a very important, very uh, effective uh, antiseptic. We also use this idoform as, as, uh, as an antiseptic. Then we have disinfectants. Dis disinfectants are again are the chemical substances which kills the micro microorganisms and they are mainly used to what, clean the toilets, the floors and instruments and drainage systems. 
So from there we want to get rid of the germs and the microbes, we use what the chemical substances, disinfectants. Now what is the basic difference between the two is antiseptics are safe for human tissues, disinfectants are not safe for human tissues. They are present in higher concentration. We cannot use disinfectants to clean our wounds, that's the most important. Fine. Now phenol, 1% solution of phenol is a very good disinfectant and simultaneously it's 0.2% solution is a very good antiseptic also because it's very low concentration. Then chlorine from 0.2 to 0.4 ppm aqueous solution and SO2 in a very dilute conditions are, are also a very important disinfectants which are used to clean floors, uh, drainage systems, instruments, surgical instruments, etc. The next category of drugs on the basis of the therapeutic actions are anti-fertility drugs. See, we have developed the, these drugs in the medicines and, they, and that is why we have been able to uh, prevent ourselves from the infections, from the diseases and we have been able to very successful to cure ourselves from the diseases and infections and that is why it has increased the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the lifespan of a human beings. Now, that is why the mortality rate is now going very down. But other, thing, other important thing is that simultaneously, the uh, lot of births are taking place Lot of, um, because and that is why the population is increasing day by day. Now, therefore, we have to control those. Uh, the, there's the population increase in the population, and anti-fertility drugs plays a very important role in this regard. These anti-fertility drugs are artificial or synthetic estrogen or progesterone hormones, which are mainly responsible for this purpose. Now, when taken in the form of the pills, either in the form of a morning after pills or they can take it before to prevent the, uh, the pregnancies, these. These drugs basically prevent um, uh, the females getting pregnant. The, the uh, norethindron is the most commonly used progesterone, a synthetic progesterone drug which is being taken to prevent the pregnancy. So these are your anti-fertility drugs.